And the number one thing I find is people want freedom from the worry. They don't want, they want freedom to experience, but they're in that lack. Like, I just don't want to think about this anymore. I don't want to have to think every day. I don't want it to consume my thoughts about how much debt I have. I don't want it to consume my thoughts about how unhealthy I am or how overweight I am. Or I don't want it to consume my thoughts about how much my spouse doesn't like me or doesn't treat me well. Like we want freedom from the consumption of information about our what we lack. Let's blow this up. Look alive, Bomb Squad. We are back for Season 1, Episode 4 of Let's Blow This Up. I am your host, Jason Sircone. Whether you're listening on your favorite app, whether you're watching on YouTube, whether you found another way to consume this podcast, I want to welcome you to the show, and I am damn glad to have you part of this experience and this ride with me. Today, we are talking about something that transcends our theme for the season, which is the qualities of building an impactful brand. Now, of course, what we talk about today is absolutely knowledge and insight that's going to apply to your professional world. But Dr. Tanya Kindle has some strategies on how we can stop focusing on the problems that we face in our lives and instead put emphasis on the solutions. Now, like I said, this transcends everything in business, but it's also such a core part of what we do in our businesses. If you're developing a brand, you know how hard it is sometimes to look towards the solutions and instead put your emphasis on all of the problems that you're facing. Tanya is going to help you flip that script today because she's got a remarkable approach to how you shift your mindset and start thinking about the right things. Believe me, this is information that is going to impact you on multiple levels, and I am not going to keep it from you any longer. Let's get to it. Dr. Tanya Kindle is on season one, episode four of Let's Blow This Up. Let's go. All right, Tanya Kindle, welcome to Let's Blow This Up. It's a pleasure to have you here on the show today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here in the world Me, of podcasting. <laughs> absolutely. So this is one of your first forays into podcasting, yes, right? Yes. I'm Very gla- exciting. <laughs> glad we're here to help you bridge that gap. This is honestly a conversation I've been looking forward to since you and I connected. And I know I've said this to you a couple of times. We should have recorded that conversation. <laughs> Because we've brought so much insight to the table and automatically realized this is going to make for a damn good podcast. Yeah, episode. yeah, so, love, love the conversation. So I'm excited to be here. So we've officially pressed record and we're going to make it happen today so the Bomb Squad can get the most from what you and I have to say. Mainly you. I want you to take center stage and really let people understand why we need to shift our mindsets and start looking at the solutions instead of the problems. And this is something that we've done so much in our world from Mm -hmm. a personal standpoint, from a professional standpoint, it impacts our mental health so much. And I know that you have so much positive insight on this based on our first conversation. Looking forward (laughs) to capturing all of that with you today. Awesome. Before we dive in, let the Bomb Squad know who Tanya Kindle is. What do you do? Who are you? What are you doing (laughs) to change the world with everything you do? Oh, well, that is a great question because it's constantly changing as we must adapt every day to what the world is becoming and what we want to be in this world. I am a doctor of clinical psychology, so I was trained as a professional clinical psychologist in basically diagnosing and finding everything wrong with everybody, (laughs) the problems, the diagnosis, the disease model and how to then treat that uh, within a clinical setting. And it's, um, it's a great way that we learn to analyze, we learn to figure out the whys, but oftentimes we can analyze things till there's no end. Um, we just kind of get stuck in that model of why, why, what's the reason, what's you know, analysis and diagnosis and symptom management. And um, I, 
was in multiple settings from the forensic environment to a hospital. I worked in bariatrics with uh, bariatric surgery and oncology with cancer, multiple different settings, neuroscience, and loving it, loving helping others, loving really kind of helping people cope with these diseases and disorders and reduce symptoms until I um, went through my own trauma. In uh, 2015, I had my daughter and just the perfect storm of things happened and, you know, birth trauma, stressors at work, in, in the middle of it, doctoral internship, you know, families, living with my family. My husband was working in another state, like perfect storm of, of things and realized that, you know, the depression and anxiety that, you know, we all face really needs a shift. It needs a shift. You know, I knew why, I knew where, I knew how, I knew what, I knew family history, all these things. But all of those things really didn't help me to to move through it, to adapt, to kind of find that that point where I was experiencing the joy and the things around me that I really wanted to have that human experience, which I love so much is, you know, really living this life, like really, you know, experiencing all that we can. So um, with multiple different transitions, I ended up starting my own business and a private practice in Zelianople, Pennsylvania here where I see um, clients one-on-one -on -one, and we work through those things um, to find patterns to things instead of diagnosis, instead of problems, we, we work through the, the shifting from the analytical into the how, into the what do you want into true purpose in their lifetime for them. So really my own experiences as most people go through their own experiences, really shift their shift their perspective on life. And I'm now currently here with my family, with my two kids and husband and my new business in Zeely. So that's a long story short of who I am and what, what I'm doing. Well, that's a phenomenal journey that you've had. And I was going to say, just listening to you tell that story, I would assume that a lot of the assistance and guidance that you're giving to your clients today is drawn from that experience that you had and yes. everything that you've gone through has helped you become more stronger and bring that type of guidance and assistance to the right people when they need it. Definitely. I mean, especially working in multiple, multiple systems from um, Center City, D.C. I worked in forensics helping uh, a youth um, try and work through getting charged with drugs and homicides and vandalism, like really kind of seeing where we need a lot more empathy and compassion for our human existence. So going from that survival mode to that thrive mode is, is the big key because so many people are stuck in that survival. I just got to get through. I just got to get through it. So in forensics or in when you're working with people who are in prisons or when you're working with people who are at the the brink of disease where it's sort of taking over you know finding that compassion and saying oh there's the same patterns are going on here the same patterns right. so we're not all separate this is all interlinked you know we're either in survive or we're in thrive we just got to get through that bridge Tell me about making that transition from survival to thriving, because at least the way I see it, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, I feel like when you're in that mode and you're just day to day trying to find new ways to survive and get to that next day, breaking that pattern is almost impossible. And it, it, it does require this amazing internal paradigm shift to get mm -hmm. to a point to where you're not thinking about survival but you're now thinking about the, the, the positives that can lead to a more thriving lifestyle. But when you're down for so long, it can be yeah. so hard to snap oh, out of yeah. that. Tell me yes. how that works. Oh, you're exactly right. It is very difficult to snap out of it because most of the time survival is in your subconscious. It's not, it's not something that you're, you're attending to waking up every day and saying, oh, I have to get out of survival mode. This is basically, how am I feeling when I wake up? Like, what's my perception of the world? You know, 
what's my body feel like? You know, all these things are subconscious information that the body is picking up on. So if that's who's running the show right now, if you're in survival mode, it's not your conscious. You can't talk yourself out of it. You know, you can look around and say, I know that I'm safe. I know I can be grateful for things, but there's a part of you that's still like, oh, why can't I just feel good? Like, why can't, like, what is this stuck? Why do I try so hard and then kind of end up back in the same place? Because your subconscious patterns, like your body, your chemicals, everything is still kind of in that survival mode based off of past patterns, based off of, you know, could be multiple things. It could be past traumas. It could be, you know, experiences or messages you picked up in childhood. It could be things passed down from generations. We know that now not just your eye color and how you look and disease models are genetics, but also fear responses, how we kind of see the world and and also things that happen prenatal in those last three months of, of being in the womb you know, whatever's going on in your environment, you're coding, you're coding in your womb. So like in internally, so like these things, we might not even be aware of, we might not be aware of it, our brain will like to put stories around it. Well, that's the analytical part, our brain will put a story around everything. But really, it's our subconscious that is sort of running the show until we bring it into the present, until we consciously sort of align and say, okay, this is a pattern I can see and I have to either release it or shift it. And there's multiple, multiple different modalities for that. But also we have to be willing to, like we, we attach a lot to our identity, you know, oh, I'm an, I'm an, you know, overworker, or I'm a, I don't need any sleep, or yeah, I only eat one meal a day, or like, we attach a lot of these survival things to our identity, to who we are, like, and they're often not helpful in shifting that and bringing that to the conscious. And sometimes they also have like some secondary gains to it, you know, as, as long as I'm, you know, working, 24 hours a day, I don't have to go visit my family for on the weekends <laughs> or something, right? Like there's so many different mechanisms underlying that, but the how is really that alignment is bringing that, bringing those patterns to the present and saying, are these helpful for you anymore? And for some people, they might say, okay, yeah, I can't let go of that yet. I'm not ready to let go. And that's, that's the biggest thing you hear anymore, right? It's like, let it go, let it go. Some people can't. It's a subconscious survival pattern. You can't just let it go. Right. Like you have to be able to really work through in a compassionate way, like how that has helped you and why it's not helpful anymore. And in other ways to then manage that. You, if you're, if you have a, a sibling that you, you have problems with and you're constantly in rivalry and jealousy you can't just let it go and then show up for thanksgiving like you need a plan <laughs> to sort of work through that and your subconscious is is has to be on board with that to know anymore that that is not a threat that there are ways to kind of work through that so it's all about alignment in bringing that those the the subconscious to the present do you think a lot of the mindset of not being able to get to that level comes from the fact that we just we get so stuck in our ways that even if we know consciously we need to make that shift mm -hmm. towards that more positive outlook and start focusing on the right things there's still that part of us inside it's like the you know you get the two people on your shoulder like i'm thinking of yes. cartoons yes. and you get the little guy over here oh yeah do this mm -hmm. and then over here no way man you're not doing that like that internal struggle mm -hmm. to me it feels like it's never going to allow you to break through on your own you're going to need somebody mm -hmm. to push you in the right direction and shut the guy on the right shoulder up so you don't put emphasis on what he's telling you and listen to the other dude and for me i know every, we all have those types mm -hmm. of battles inside and for me when things started to shift and i'm not saying i'm 100 perfect in this realm but the big three words I try to focus on at all times, no matter what, accentuate the positives. Mm -hmm. 
Now, is that always easy? Hell no. There are always going to be times where it doesn't seem like there is a positive. But if you're willing to do the exercises to look deep mm -hmm. and actually find something and, and not be jaded, you'll find something. Yes. But again, yes. I feel as if sometimes we get ourselves so just stuck in our own ruts that we Correct. can't let that type of thinking come forward. And that translates to building our brands as well, which I feel yeah. what you're saying today, why I love this subject so much, because it's not just about our personal lives. It can affect us professionally so much. I mean, yeah, it's it's everything when when we're working with energy and what you're you're describing is a type of therapy we also call IFS, which is like a parts where we identify those voices and those parts that kind of try to the brain's way of figuring out what the subconscious wants. Right. Like that idea of like one part of me is saying this, the other part of me is saying that like sometimes those can take over and if they're based on a belief of fear, of lack, then the energy that's driving you to do something can actually be the energy, like that survival energy that gets drained really easily. So we do want to focus on the positives, but on the side of what's the, what are those connected to, right? So that is the really key part, whether it's financial, whether it's relationships, whether it's building your business, which is, you know, often an extension of your personality and your passion, mm -hmm. whether it's your health and your body. I mean, look at look at the four main areas of self-help. You're always going to come back to these main things, right? It's our, our financial, which is our safety, our security, our relationships, you know, love, family, our health, and our body image, <laughs> like our, our our idea of those things. Like we kind of get drawn and usually stuck. And some of us are really great. Like your business is flying by, you're doing great, but then your relationships are struggling. Or, or maybe you have amazing supportive relationships and your health is failing. Like oftentimes we're moving in, pushing in one direction and getting pulled in another. So when it comes to understanding that they are two sides of the same coin. Like, you know, you can either be extremely passionate and connected to something, and that's going to be your motivation, your drive, your willpower, all those things that people want, or you're fearing it. You're lacking something like, Oh, I lack, I hate my job. I lack respect. I'm going to start my own business. That's not the emotion that you want to go into. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> right. I hate all my bosses. I can't get along with anybody. So that's why I'm going to start my own business. Like, <laughs> that's not the emotion that you want to shift into. If that's the motivation, if you're like, okay, I need a change. Right. Often these, these frustrations or these, this anger or sadness, or like, it tells us we need a change, but what we need is not a change in the external. We need a change in the internal. Right. We need to shift that into like, okay, what am what am I missing and what do I want? What do I need? Because that need, that joy that I want to do my passion, I want to do my joy, I want to do that, it needs some place to land, yeah. right? You can't just say, oh, I'm going to think positive and be like, everything's going to be great. What's your experience with great? What does great feel like? What does great look like? Where is great located in your body? like really trying to figure out that connection to if it's building a business, what are those connections? Like, what is your why? Because if your why is getting away from your boss, you're going to have a hard time. <laughs> your emotions are running, your energy is running in the wrong direction. No, you're absolutely right. I, I can tell a perfect story from my experience in podcasting. I've been doing this for just a little over 10 years as we sit and record today. And the reason I started my first podcast was out of spite. And it was the stupidest reason because <laughs> I had some guy was trolling me on Twitter and I looked to see what he did and he hosted a podcast and me and my best friend had been talking about starting a podcast <laughs> ourselves. And that was what pushed me over the edge. And I kind of said, okay, I've got our idea. This is what we're going to do. And we're going to do it better than that guy. And we did our first episode and it was terrible. Like it was yeah. nowhere near what that guy did. Cause I had no idea. I mean, I had radio experience, but building yeah. a podcast, I had no idea what I was doing, but I'm thankful I did it. Mm -hmm. because it got me back into audio. Like I said, doing radio in college was huge for me. I loved it. 
yeah. getting back into the game was a lot of fun. And I just pushed to get better and better and better. And I continue to do that to this day. But mm -hmm. I don't recommend to anybody, if you're out there thinking about starting a podcast, to do it out of spite. Yes. <laughs> do it for the right reasons. Do it because you're passionate about what you want to talk about. You're yes. going to go a lot further. <laughs> right. And that's a really huge key is like you, before you start anything, whether it is a business or, you know, a social media platform or a diet plan or an exercise, like whatever it is, we have to figure out what energy is fueling it. Mm -hmm. Because if it's, it's fueled on lack, if it's fueled, and that's, that's survival energy. That's sort of our energy that we carry that says I'm missing something. So I have to chase it. Yeah. And that's when we talk about fight or flight in, in mental health. Like if you're going into this out of anger or you're going into this out of spite or frustration or fear, even if it's stopping you from starting your own business out of fear, you're like you keep thinking about it, but you're like, oh, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm afraid. That's the energy that's going to show it's that's the energy that's going to be seen by others too because our subconscious picks up on that yeah. you know you could have a beautiful like setup and you know if you're afraid of something like your your audience is going to feel that they're going to oh, see yeah. that it's going to come through no matter what your content is that's why it kind of goes back to that hamster wheel of things if we get stuck on I need more education. I need to know why I need more analysis. I need more, you know, support. I need more, like you get stuck in that lack wheel. Yeah. <laughs> like there's something wrong with me. I'm a failure. I'm not good enough. No matter what the external reflection is, whether it's health, business, finance, anything, relationships, it's going to continue to be seen that way. So yeah. we have to shift into that other side, which is more of the, okay, why is this important to you? What do you want to feel? What are the emotions that you're looking to have? Because you can have a business or you can have a baby. Like <laughs> you have to be able, like yeah. one, you know, in terms of like babies, you can't, you, you have to be there 24 hours a day. You have to be like emotionally involved, like, with a business, you can build it upon emotion, build it upon, but you do have to have that reflection of like, if your business fails, it doesn't mean you are a failure. It means that you might've messed up some things and you have to kind of be curious yeah. and go back and go through it. But if you have that, if my business fails, I am a failure. If and I don't get enough of this, then people don't like me or I'm not respected. Right. That's going to really harm yourself, your mental health and your business. Creating engaging, explosive content that positions your brand as an authority and go to resource in your industry doesn't need to be complicated, stressful or time consuming. All you need is a strategy that sets you up for success and a partner to keep you on the right track. This is my mission at Bomb Track Media. I'll show you the most efficient way to produce brand elevating content that can be utilized throughout your digital footprint, all done with your goals and busy schedule in mind. You're not a full-time podcaster. Why commit to a full-time podcaster schedule? It's time for you to blow this up and rethink how you grow your brand. Visit bombtrackmedia.com today to learn more. 100%. And you mentioned the hamster wheel, and I feel like at this point, I need to give a shout out to my main man, Wiley McGraw. He is he's a guy I met on one of my past podcasts, Evolution of Brand. You'll hear his voice on this show, but I highly recommend you look him up because the work he does in this space is phenomenal. And he was the one that broke it open for me regarding coaching today. Mm -hmm. So much coaching and so much information that you find mm -hmm. to try to make those steps forward. It's designed to keep you on that hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's here's the solution put it to work and now we're done. Yeah. It's, here's yeah. this for now. And then you're going to get into my next program and then you're going to get into my next program and it's no growth. It's exactly. just constant spinning and it doesn't force you to look at the right areas. And you mentioned it earlier with relationships. Mm -hmm. One of the big things Wiley told me when we were talking, we, and we've had multiple conversations since we first met, but one of the things he's talked about is you meet somebody that's got this su successful facade, say that three times fast, <laughs> and you pull the curtain back mm -hmm. and it's 
pure chaos. Yeah. Relationships are all screwed up. They don't have a clear sense of direction. Finances might be out of whack. There's mm -hmm. a number of things that can be masked by that front facing powerful social media image. But if you're not willing to pull the curtain back yourself and get yeah. to the root of the problems, you can expect to stay on that same track until you decide. I have to do this. I have to make this change today. Exactly. And the change, like I said, is always internal. It is always, Absolutely. it always has to start internally because if we, if we try external, we're just sort of going, we're chasing, we're doing that next thing. And that's usually in the escape mode or the fight or flight, right? Like if you keep jumping from job to job or business to business or relationship to relationship, or end up in those same patterns where you might have this huge like revolution revelation and then your body goes, eh, you know what? That seems a little too hard. We're going to go back to homeostasis now for the next <laughs> three weeks. And, right. and then it comes up again. So if you see those patterns coming up, that's when you want to kind of be, bring that conscious awareness into the subconscious patterns because they will repeat no matter how, how wonderful, you know, you could, you know, get, a million dollars one day and if you if you're feeling like oh my gosh like i'm still not happy it's still not enough i'm still not secure i can't spend time with my family i still need to work more you're going to just kind of continue that same pattern over and over again no i've heard that about the reaching that i mean you could set it as your goal or say it's your goal and this is where you want to mm -hmm. get to financially but that's really not what the goal is mm -hmm. because it's, yeah. it's what that money can give you. That's going to make you happy with the financial freedom of being able to travel more, spend more time with your family, you name it. It's, it's, it's yeah. all subjective, but you have to be able to get there mentally and say that in order for me to get to that point, I have to make mm -hmm. these changes. And if I'm not willing to make those changes, I'm going to be stuck. It's just yeah. never going to happen for me. I, it's, I mean, I'm a perfect example of this right now is one of the goals I set going into 2024 was to lose 80 pounds. And the reason I set the number at 80 is because about eight or nine years ago, I lost 75. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I've done this already. And then I screwed up and put it back on. Let's lose it all again, plus five. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in that mindset of what do I need to do every day to get to that level or that number. And it's not even really the number. Like I weighed yeah, myself yeah. at the start and I said, okay, that's the number, but mm -hmm. I'm not coming back to the scale for a few months because I, I just I wanted to have an idea of where I was, but I know I have to put the work in. And if you yeah. start looking at the scale every day, that number is going to play tricks. That's, what, that's the last thing I want. Yeah. So this is great. So this is where yeah. we want to say the number is for your brain, but that's only half. So the yeah. feeling is for your heart. Like, so your subconscious only responds to feeling. It does not respond to analysis, numbers, logic, like that's all for your brain. Your heart is the one that picks, that picks up on what energy and direction you're moving towards. So if you're moving towards this goal that you want to feel better, that you want to be able to like run around, that you want to feel like you can breathe better or sleep better mm -hmm. or right, like just genuinely, and there is no judgment. It could be like, you want to look better in the mirror. Who cares? There's no judgment. We are humans. We are allowed to want these things mm -hmm. and, and all those things But we have to really bring those to attention. Like, what does that feel like to finally, you know, to feel that health, to be able to breathe, to wake up. So a lot of times we, we do, we put numbers in our minds in their great motivators, we just have to get that connection, that why is emotional, that why is emotional, just like you said, that million dollars, right, or that money, for one person, a million dollars is nothing for another person, it's everything, right? So what would that money mean to you? What does it mean about Damn. you? What does it mean for your experiences in this lifetime that you are going to say, like, okay, and the number one thing I find is people want freedom from the worry. They want freedom to experience, but they're in that lack. Like, I just don't want to think about this anymore. I don't want to have to think every day. I don't want it to consume my thoughts about how much debt I have. I don't want it to consume my thoughts about how unhealthy I am or how overweight I am. Or I don't want it to consume my thoughts about how much my spouse doesn't like me or doesn't treat me well. Like, 
we want freedom from the consumption of information about our what we lack. Yeah. So we think getting these external things are going to give us that freedom. And it doesn't. You know, it helps. It gives us dopamine for a hit for a while. Yeah. It's a great dopamine hit. It's like a runner's high mm -hmm. in that way that you get to that point where you're like, okay, I get a little bit of relax and then it'll settle in. But if we can shift that in us, like that we have these beliefs set about ourselves that we're more than just these things on the outside, but it will shift everything for us. Like the connection will then start to shift your energy and you want to move more. You don't have to push yourself to move more. And sometimes, you know, that push is what we need when we're in that good energy. I'm sure, you know, when you're exercising sometimes and you're, you're feeling it and you're like, okay, my body wants a little bit more push today. It feels mm -hmm. good. It feels good to kind of give our body. But if you're, ha if you're, if you're have the flu, and you're like, oh, my gosh, if I don't exercise today, I'm going to be off track. And then you push yourself. It's worse. Mm -hmm. You don't give your body that recovery time. So we really have to have that energy moving in the right direction when it comes to what we're what we're going for our goals and combine both our conscious mind, like setting those goals and our subconscious being on board with it not saying, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, remember the last time you lost weight, you gained it all back. <laughs> and then you were really sad. And then we went through that period and like, we don't want to do that again. So we're not even going to try hard this time. Yeah. That's what our subconscious does. It just says, mm, we're going to make this decision for you. If you're not, if you're not here, you're somewhere else. I think the biggest most powerful advice that I've ever received. And it comes from, it, it's all about building your brand, building your body, building your mind, your soul, whatever you are looking to improve. Don't try to eat the elephant in one bite. Yes. If you take small bites, it's going to be much easier to consume. If you're looking to lose weight, if I looked at 80 pounds and said, that's, oh my God, that number is astronomical. How am I ever going to get there? No, I look at like, mm -hmm. how can I just get there and do put in one hour today and lose one pound over a week, maybe mm -hmm. two pounds over a week. I, you got to do the smaller numbers first. And then as those compound and you continue to build those good habits, then you're going to get to the place you want to get to. And that's yes. all internal mindset. That's all about how you come into these tasks and objectives that you want to achieve business-wise, personal-wise, mental health-wise. Yes. You got to be thinking on that level or else you're just going to stay stuck. Yes. And a lot of times what we get is our self judgment, right? Like we have this, we have these passions we have, and then we might get stuck one day or find a day when we're just struggling a little more. And then that, that part, that judgment part comes up. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is what, when we talk about self love and I hate that term, I don't know, like, it just seems so fruity lead spectacular almost like a unicorn <laughs> like like Love it's me so, me, right <laughs> yeah it's it, you know it's all over social media and that way just love yourself it doesn't work like that <laughs> like it doesn't work like that there's you, that has to have some place to land you have to have some experience with it so when i when i first start to work with people on what that looks like it's like ha having curiosity instead of judgment like if you, right. if you mess up one day and you're like, oh man, like I just, it's end, it's the over, like I'm worthless. I'm, you know, I can't do anything right. You're basically sending yourself back into survival mode in that instant. And then you probably got a nice three or four weeks of feeling horrible before you kind of start to come out of it again. So like having that just shift out of judgment, like, oh, wait, I'm judging myself again. And that's not going to because your chemicals will shift. Like if you start judging yourself and like your body is going to, your chemicals, your adrenaline, your cortisol, like all that's going to shift. And then you're in a stress response. Yeah. You're in a stress response and your body's got to deal with that instead of what else you might want to do that day. If you want to take a walk or something, it's got to like, oh, now we got to get, we got to filter all these chemicals all over again. Mm-hmm. And you kind of get stuck in that pattern of like blame and self judgment and, and on yourself, which can basically make you feel like feel horrible because your chemicals are off too. Yeah. So it is a physical and 
you know, mental and emotional balance, like constantly moving. And I feel the one thing that, you know, can help with that is connection. Like it's hard to do this alone. Right. Just like you said at the beginning, like we need like that support and connection from others to know, like, you know, it's okay. Everybody feels like this. Sometimes you need that support and doing it alone, going through somebody else's program where you're kind of separated from them and you're just sort of trying to do this all on yourself your your subconscious parts are going to like win out <laughs> they're going to they're going to talk you into ah oh, you don't have to get on that you know that webinar today cuz they're no they're not really paying attention to you there's a thousand people on there you know you know your camera's not even on just lay in bed mm -hmm. right we go through it so really kind of bringing back that connection that we lost so much during covid into getting our getting ourselves into working one-on-one -on -one with others or, you know, coming out there and into your community or into groups and things where you can really kind of start to feel supported in this because it is, it's, it's all humans go through it. There is no such thing as, you know, when it comes to separation of silos of mental illness, we all go through stages of things and all need the support. <laughs> Well, you, you've set the table perfectly. So I'm going to let you take it from here. If someone listening to this podcast right now is looking for that partnership and looking to have somebody bring this positive force into their life and they know you are the resource and I am vouching for you right now and saying, yes, you need to contact Tanya. Tell them what it's like to work with you. How are you going to help them make that paradigm shift and ultimately get things on course so they can start focusing on all of those solutions instead of all the problems. Awesome. So the first step is just a, a consultation. My number is directly to me. That's that's the one thing I do have set up is that you will be talking directly to me. So it is not an AI system or software. Not that I'm against those. I'm just <laughs> this is this is the first step is is that connection. Is that connection to know like um, if you go on my website or my social media or Google Maps, whatever you want to do, you know, that that number on there is directly to me um, and the email is directly to me. So that is the open step of first just reaching out and making that connection. And then we have a conversation. We just have a simple conversation to say, like, are we you know, are you in the place that you're ready to kind of learn these things and shift these things and and most people who are looking for this type of work have been through therapy or have had their um, have had periods of saying, OK, there has to be something more. But I just I know I'm stuck. I just don't know why I'm stuck or how I'm stuck or how to get out of it. So they are on that bridge between the, they're conscious of it and but their subconscious is still running the show. So there's a place for them to kind of say, all right, this this makes sense. So what I'm explaining makes sense. Um, and then we, you know, we go over what you're looking for, what I can offer. And then it's just a simple in-person meeting. Um, there's no lengthy questionnaires or anything like that. There's no personality testing or anything. I will pick up on all of that information as we work together. And then from there, if they want to continue to work together, there's packages and things that are available. But the sessions with me really are bringing the patterns out. So the first session, we talk a lot about what we can find in patterns. When we look at patterns, and that's our conscious cognitive part, we don't have to go through every single event. Like we don't have, you don't have to know like what happened in utero. <laughs> which you probably don't. So that's okay. You don't have to know generations of things. We're looking at patterns, you know, and when we see a pattern of maybe somebody, you know, denying their, their voice or their authentic self in order to please the family system or to be accepted or a fear of rejection, which is a very common pattern we have as humans. We don't have to go back and be like, oh, this was your somebody else's fault or this fault. We don't really look at blame. We just look at patterns and we wouldn't bring those patterns to the present. Then we kind of bring awareness of, of what is OK to release, like what consciously and subconsciously through feeling and being in our bodies is OK to release. 
for some people, you know, they're not ready to release that resentment yet. Nope, nope, nope. I need, you know, that resentment's protecting me because if I wasn't resentful, I would be, you know, I would be walked on at, at Thanksgiving. Like I need that or, you know, so sometimes we have to sort of bring those up. And then as people get more in focusing on what connection they want, what kind of life do you want? What human experiences do you want? What do you want to be free of? What do you want instead? Right? Like, then we can kind of use that connection to start release some of those patterns. And there's many different ways of releasing. Uh, I think Joseph Murphy said it great. And he said, if somebody tells you they have one way to access subconscious, they're lying. Because there are so many different ways that we can do that um, just through our own somatic, getting into our own body, through uh, sound healing, energy work is great. You know, energy psychology has bridged a lot of those gaps in terms of how to release patterns in our neural pathways, um, biofeedback, many different ways. And I know pretty much all of them at this point, because <laughs> that's where I get curious and I study all these different methods and can, can in, in, with a connection with a client, can tell which one is going to be more beneficial. And I teach it to them so they can get off the hamster wheel, <laughs> That's right? Exactly right? You teach, you teach. <laughs> like I am a teacher. I'm a doctor. I'm a teacher at heart. I love knowing, I know that people are capable of being their own healers. Like you don't need to go to a shaman. Sometimes they're fun. You can always do that. It's a great experience. But I've heard so many stories of people going and going on these retreats and these deep soul journeys only to come back home and be like, well, that was great, but I can't live there. Yeah. <laughs> I have to live here. I still have to do laundry. I still have to show up yeah. for work. I still have to like some have some sense of calm when my, you know, when my eight year old screaming her head off, like, you know, <laughs> we have to live in this real world. So it brings a little bit of the, the model of, shifting into that solution focused or that more connection focused, which I like to call connection focused because that's what we're really looking for is those yeah. experiences from I need to get rid of my symptoms or I need to live on a farm by myself where I never talk to people again. And I'm a monk like there's an in-between. <laughs> there's an right. in-between of the disease and the and, you know, the avoidance. So really kind of uh, working with others in their unique patterns, because every pattern is unique. Mm -hmm. Every pattern is unique. So a coaching program that worked really well for one person may not work for that person because it's like everything else we said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, and that's why there's like a thousand self-help books out there. Why haven't we, mm -hmm. you know, been helped? <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're, it's, it's all unique. Everybody's mm -hmm. on their own journey. So really kind of having that individual attention to people and saying, okay, your journey is different than their journey. So we can't compare, but this is where your patterns are at and allowing them to have the power, right? The yeah. conscious subconscious alignment, the power is saying it's yours. I, I'm not judging you. If you want to hold on to that resentment, it's fine. Like that's, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, I can't work with you or, oh, you, you have these kind of thoughts or this kind of diagnosis. If you want to hold on to those things, that's up to you. Hmm. But you have, you have all that empowerment to kind of release them if you want and when you're ready. So giving them the power and the teaching skills to go out and say, okay, now I know how to work through this. Not, I got to go back to my therapist every time my mom calls. That's not going to help anybody in the long run. Right. Well, there's no, no question. This is a monumental mind shift. It, it, it really takes a lot of self awareness to know, okay, here's where I'm at. And if I want to get to here, I'm going to need to take these steps. One thing that I've done in this space to make myself a little bit more aware of what's in front of me is just giving myself that, that conversation or, or that tough conversation of saying, listen, you have the ability to go to the gym, to build your brand to do these things that are positive and you're blowing it. If mm -hmm. you're not, and I'm not saying you can't take a day off, but mm -hmm. if you get into that rut of not being able to get somewhere, you have to think about the people that don't have the ability to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And if it were, if it's something you need assistance with, Tanya has just laid out exactly why she is the resource to turn to. And 
I think all of us could use that mind shift in some way, shape, or form. It might be mm -hmm. subtle, but it may be profound. But mm -hmm. no matter where we are in our timeline, there's always going to be a point where we look at the, the problem instead of the solution, mm -hmm. and we have to flip that script. Tanya, I want to thank you for giving us an, a small peek <laughs> into how we can get started with that. So if what you've laid out for everybody is jiving and members of the bomb squad want to connect with you to make this happen, what is the best way for them to do so? Go onto my website, um, www.beliefdabody.com. Everything is on there. There's more information, sort of goes over my story. You can message me directly. And like I said, that number on there is my direct cell. So reach out and it's just a conversation. And I think that's what caught, what started us. It's just a conversation, you Absolutely know, we're just going right. to get started with a conversation and we can grow so much from that. So I'm just starting with a conversation and going from there. There's no, there's no pressure or anything. It's just that easy to start and just see if there's a, there's a connection and we go from there. Excellent. To me, that's what podcasting is all about. Yeah. Good conversations. And I think we've just checked that box today. Awesome. Tanya, I want to, it was fun. I want to, <laughs> I want to thank you for joining me here on Let's Blow This Up. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone that's listening.